I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Now, here are your hosts, Pastors Lynette Hagen and Denise Burns. Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. We are so glad that you've tuned in today. And I am so excited about having my daughter that's co-hosting with me. You know, uh, Denise, you've been, you were my little helper yes. when, you were, <laughs> when you were little. And now you are an extremely wonderful helper to me. And um, I'm so thankful for our mother-daughter relationship. Why don't you talk about it a little bit? Yeah, you know, it's really great when, um, you know, your mom is really your best friend. Yes. And, you know, I love all the moments that we share. And, you know, just recently I celebrated a birthday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a longstanding tradition that um, on my birthday you call and sing me happy birthday. Uh -huh. And um, that's always been so great. And, you know, we have just been friends over the years. And I think... Um, that really has a lot to do really with you, um, that you were always there, you know, never overreacting, yeah. always ready to just listen mm -hmm. and understand and help out. Yes. And um, we've had that relationship since we were young and it just continues to get better and better. I know, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about memories. Yes. And one that just came to me that, goodness, I hadn't thought about in years and years was uh, when you were a cheerleader in the seventh grade. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago, right? And I remember that um, that I would drive, you know, we would drive. The carpool. The carpool. Mm -hmm. And um, so that day, you know, I was dressed and ready to go. And you said to me, Mom, you look like a nerd. <laughs> you know, and one thing about it, you know, as, uh, as a mother, don't overreact. I didn't over, overreact. And so what did I tell you? You said, okay, well, why don't you come pick out my clothes? So I picked out your clothes. And uh -huh. I was very proud to have you around my friends looking so cool. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so, you know, that um, I know you're talking about, and I want you to talk about, because uh, you're going to be uh, speaking about anchor moments. Yes. And I'm kind of thinking that was just an anchor moment for me to know that you were proud uh, yes. of me, but that also um, that I didn't have to be offended right. at your, you know, expressing yourself. That's really true. Yeah. Yes. Um, today's message is, that I'm going to be ministering is on anchor moments. And I think it's so just appropriate for today. <sighs> yes. Uh, because, you know, we need something that we can hold on to that keeps Absolutely. us firm and secure in this very unsettling time Absolutely. Um, where it just seems like the whole world has gone crazy yes. and um, things change from moment to moment and day to day. And, but you know, the one thing that never changes is God. That's right. The word of God never changes. And in this message, I talk about whenever life just seems to be going crazy and your emotions are getting the best of you, how that you can anchor on to the word of God. So I hope that you enjoy this. I'm just gonna share today some things with you, some real practical ways. And I love what um, we have been talking about, about the mind and about the, your emotions and your soul. Because truly we really are a three-part being. We're spirit, we're body, and then we're soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. And the one area that I am attacked in probably um, the most is in my soul in my mind and in my emotions. Um, you know, and I think that a lot of, for a lot of people, you know, we know who we are in Christ and we know, you know, our spiritual realities and we know our authority that we have in Christ Jesus. But sometimes our soul 
it doesn't really grasp that, <laughs> that reality. And you know, but that's the way that God made us. He made us a three-part be being. And Jesus even dealt with emotions when he was on earth. Um, you know, Jesus experienced everything and was tempted in every way. So he dealt with his mind. He dealt with his emotions. You know, in John 11:35, the shortest scripture in the whole Bible, simply says Jesus wept, right? His best friend had just died. And even though Jesus knew, he already knew, he knew the reality that he was gonna raise Lazarus up from the dead. But in that moment, in that moment, when there was, there was death and there was despair, his emotions took over and he wept, even though he knew he was gonna see him again. I think that's a great parallel for us, you know, when those that we love go on to be with the Lord, we know the reality that their spirit is still alive and that they're in heaven and that we're gonna see them again. But our soul, it weeps, right? And you know, when you cry when somebody dies, you're just being like Jesus because that's what Jesus did. Now he didn't stay crying. You know, he, he, he knew he was gonna raise him and, and was happy, but you know, we deal with our soul. That's just part of being human, right? And you know, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness um, over in Matthew four, it's verses one through 11, it talks about when he was, you know, in the desert and he was tempted and he was hungry and the devil, what was he doing? You know, talking to his mind and Jesus kept on combating him with scriptures. And you know, that was really tough on Jesus's soul. And it says in verse 11 that the angels had to come and attend to him. And I don't think they were attending to a spiritual being because he was Jesus, you know, he had all power and authority, but they were attending to his body and his soul, his mind, his will and his emotions. So our soul is something that is just, it's just part of our natural human, you know, existence that we have to deal with. And, you know, of course our mind as well, um, you know, we've, there are so many scriptures, amazing scriptures in the Bible that deal with the mind. You know, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought, right? And make it obedient to Christ. So, you know, those scriptures would not be in the Bible if we weren't gonna have to deal with our soul, our mind, will, and emotions. So when thoughts come to us, it's normal, but we have to deal with them. You know, and uh, one of my favorite scriptures that deals with the mind is in Philippians 4, verses six through nine. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. He will, his peace will guard your heart and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable and right and pure and lovely and, admire, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You know, we have to deal with our mind and our soul. We just can't ignore them. You know, have you ever been under a lot of like stress or distressed or there were situations going on and you were, you know, you were praying and you know, you're quoting the scriptures and you're taking those thoughts captive, but just on the inside, you just, you just kind of felt your emotions, they weren't like going along, right? They were just, you're still kind of like, yes, God, I'm believing you. I'm not gonna be ruled by my emotions, but it just feels kind of heavy, right? Just kind of not right. Um, you know, when those storms, I like to say it's like we're on a sea. You know, have you ever been in the sea when it's super rough and the waves are all going and you're like, whoa, and you can't find your balance? Sometimes emotionally, we're like that as well. We just can't find our balance. And when those storms of life are happening, we need an anchor 
that we can anchor to, to keep us steady, to keep our emotions steady in a storm. And so I wanna talk to you just for just a short little bit. I wanna talk to you about having anchor moments in your life, anchor moments. Now you may say, what in the world is that? Okay, well, I'm gonna explain it to you. So um, anchoring is actually something that when you look it up, you're gonna find a definition for it. So we're gonna read it, okay? And, and I think this is very strategic that we should be doing this on a daily basis to keep our soul, our mind, will, and emotions from ruling us and just tossing us on every single wave. So anchoring is a method or a strategy to manage emotional, mental, or spiritual distress. By detaching oneself from the source of the distress or the source of a thought or a feeling and attaching to something safe and secure. So basically anchoring is you're taking, you're exchanging whatever is, you know, stressing you out or making you upset. You're releasing that and you're attaching to something that is safe and secure and strong and unchanging. It works by focusing on and attaching to an unchanging truth that provides a real sense of safe and secure and security. The primary concept for anchoring strategies is the work of Christ, amen? Because he is our anchor. Now, I didn't just make this up, it's actually biblical. And so we're gonna read over in Hebrews. Um, so let's turn over to Hebrews chapter six. We're gonna start in verse 13. Now let me set this up for you, okay? So you gotta go with me, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you just a few things, cause I'm a teacher, that's what I love to do. I love to teach and I want you to see this. So I need you to just stay hooked up with me. So in Hebrews, um, Paul was, it, it, right before this, Paul was talking to the Jews and he was explaining about, you know, the, about Jesus and that Jesus was our eternal sacrifice and the work that um, Jesus did on the cross. And, you know, he was talking to them about how we could have an eternal relationship with the Lord. So we'll pick it up in Hebrews chapter six. It says, for example, there was God's promise to Abraham. Since there was no one greater to swear by, God took an oath in his own name saying, I will certainly bless you and I will multiply your descendants beyond number. Then Abraham waited patiently and he received what God had promised. Now, when people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. And without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. Thank God that he never changes his mind, amen? He doesn't just say, oh, I changed my mind. You're not gonna have an eternal relationship with me. No, praise God that he doesn't, no matter what we do, okay? Um, so God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him who's him, we who have fled to God for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us, that eternal hope that we have. This hope, this hope that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ, this hope that we can have an eternal relationship with Christ, this hope that one day we will have our eternal reward, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It didn't say for our spirit, because our spirit already knows that. But sometimes our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions has a hard time with that. And God knew that we were going to need an anchor for our emotions, an anchor for our minds. So when that, the storms of life come and trying to, you know, make us go back and forth and just keep us in distress and discouragement that we could have an anchor for our souls. I love what um, it says in the NIV. It says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure, 
firm and secure. Jesus is our anchor. Now, how does an anchor work? All right, so, you know, an anchor, you know, it's really big. And what does it do? You know, you throw it out of the boat and it digs deep into the bottom of the ocean, right? And so it keeps the boat from moving. Now, it doesn't matter the size of the boat, you know, but when it digs deep in there, I mean, the boat's not moving, right? It keeps it safe and secure. But does an anchor do any good if it's not attached to the boat? No. I mean, you could throw just an anchor out of a boat and you would just keep on sailing on, right? And you would say, bye-bye anchor. You know, you need a rope that connects you to that anchor, okay? So the, the anchor doesn't do any good if you don't have a rope to connect that boat, okay? So it won't drift away. And an anchor is, you know, it's used not only when things, when the sea is stormy and you don't wanna move, but even if the ocean is pretty calm, you still have to have an anchor because you'll drift away even in the calm. So here's the deal. The anchor moments, like we're the boat, okay? This is the analogy, we're the boat. You can be a small boat, it's okay. You don't have to be a big boat, you can be a small boat. And Jesus is our anchor, but what keeps us safe and secure to that anchor is the rope. And the rope is anchor moments in your life that anchor you to Jesus to keep your soul secure and firm and to keep your emotions secure and firm and your mind secure and firm. So you may say, what do anchor moments look like? Because I have no idea what you're talking about right now. You're talking about anchors and boats and I don't even live near the ocean, okay? Well, I don't either. I live in the middle of the United States. But, okay, so let me tell you what anchor moments look like, all right? Anchor moments are those times in your life that you reflect back and you see that Jesus was right there keeping you, holding you, keeping you firm and secure. So, you know, an anchor moment may look like an answered prayer, something that was super specific to you. You know, I know one time, one of my sons, he came home from school and he was really upset. And so I said, well, son, why are you upset? And he said, mom, you know, there's some of my uh, teammates that they're just, they're not being nice. They're talking about me behind my back. Um, you know, they're just saying really rude things to me. They're just putting me down constantly. And these are supposed to be my friends. And he was just super upset. And of course, as a mom, I wanted to make it okay for him. And so I'm telling him, you know, oh, you know, son, you know, don't worry about them. They don't know what they're talking about. And he's like, yeah, mom, but it really hurts my feelings. Like these are my bros, these are my guys. And it really hurts my feelings. And of course, you know, I'm upset, you know, wanting to, to fix it for him because, you know, no parent likes to see their child upset. And so I'm trying everything to help him to anchor him because he's on this emotional distress and he's just so upset. And everything I'm saying to him, it, it's not helping, not helping at all. And so he went up to his bedroom all upset. And so I went into my bedroom and I was upset too. And so I, I prayed out to God and I said, God, my son is hurting. He's hurting emotionally and I can't help him. And so God, you're going to have to show him and you're going to have to help him and you're going to have to heal his emotions. I don't know how God, but you're gonna have to do it. And so, you know, I just prayed for a little bit and then I stopped. Well, the next day I picked him up from school and he got in the car and he said, mom, you're never gonna believe what happened to me today. And I said, what? And he said, um, in between classes, I went to my locker 
and I opened it up and there was a t-shirt, it was a certain brand of t-shirt that I had been wanting. And this was like a really expensive t-shirt, okay? Um, it was, you know, a $200 t-shirt, which is crazy. But anyways, it was, and he, he wanted it. He said, there was this t-shirt in there. And I said, well, who was it from? And he said, I don't know. There was a note on it and it just said, I said, I was, so this is another teenage boy, said, I was praying uh, last night and I felt like God wanted you to have this t-shirt and I felt like God wanted me to tell you that he loves you. That is an anchor moment. That moment right there, not only for my son, but for me too, that God would care enough about my son and his emotions, that he would do something like that, that was a rope just anchoring to Jesus. That was an anchor moment. And you know, I prayed for my son several times since then. And every time I think, oh God, this, God, I don't know if you can come through for my son on this. I don't know. You know what I do? I remember that moment when I prayed for my son and when God answered that prayer through that t-shirt, through another teenager. And you know what? That anchors me. That anchors me to Jesus. It anchors my soul. It anchors my emotions in my mind. And I just think, okay, God, remember back then? Yeah, you had him back then. I know that you've got him now. And that anchors my soul and it helps me from not becoming all upset and distressed. Those are the anchor moments that we need to recognize in our life that we need to hold on to as a hope for our soul. You know, maybe it's a song that ministers to you. Um, maybe it's a time that God has met a financial need. You know, I, I had this anchor moment like literally happened this week. I mean, anchor moments happen all the time. We just don't realize them. And if we don't realize them, we can't hold on to them and anchor to them whenever the storms of our emotions are going crazy. They're important to remember, to have, to write down because when those storms of life come, you need to go back and remember. You need to go back and remember those moments. I hope that you enjoyed that message. And I just wanna pray for you right now. If you are going through just a turbulent time in your life where you just need some peace and you just need some hope, right now in the name of Jesus, I just ask that the peace of God just surround your heart and your mind right now in the name of Jesus. And that God will show you those moments, those anchor moments where you can hold on to him and he will be an anchor for your soul, firm and secure to keep your mind and your emotions peaceful in the name of Jesus. You know, peace is so important. And um, that's one of the things that I will I really play songs about peace. Yes. And of course, you know, I play the old hymns. Yes, I do like this. <laughs> and, and those were the things that, um, you know, would come to me because yes. I would hear them over and over and over again. And um, there's one that just says, peace, peace, wonderful, wonderful peace. peace coming down. down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit and forever I, I pray. pray. And, and fathomless, fathomless billows, billows of love. love. And so I want to say to you, just let the peace of God surround you and hold on to those anchor moments that Denise was talking about. Well, Denise, what's happening in a week? Uh, Kindle the Flame Women's Conference. <laughs> yes, right here on the Rama campus, September the 24th through the 26th. Um, I'll be speaking. Yes. You'll be speaking a heart to heart. Yes, What other I speakers will. do we have? Um, we have Brenda Thomas, mm -hmm. Marcy Glisson, uh, Lynette Estrada, and Lois Toucher. Yes. So we've got a great lineup, and it's the 20th anniversary. Absolutely. Our 20th year of Kindle the Flame. Can you believe that? I cannot. It, and, it's going to be a great time. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about the fact our first Kindle the Flame was after 9-11. Yes. 
and here it is 20 years later, <laughs> and look what's happening. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but praise the Lord, we are a survivor. Yes. We win, yes. and it's just going to be an awesome time. So we encourage you to go online and register. Yes. What's our offer, Denise? We have got a great offer for you today. We have um, my CD, Living in Continual Peace, talking about peace. Yes. And um, this will just really bless you and teach you how to live daily in peace, yes. every hour, 365 days a year. So that's a good one. We also have your CD, Fuel Your Passion for God. Yes. And um, that was just a phenomenal message that just gets you on fire for God yes. um, in these last days because Jesus yes. is coming back soon. That's right. And we need to get, be more passionate than ever for yes. God. And then also your Seed Thoughts devotional. Um, this is a great encouragement. It's a weekly devotional. It's just one devotion for all week. So you can just meditate on it and really um, get those things in your heart. Yes. And so this is a great offer. You can get all of this. Um, for a gift of $19 or more if yes. you uh, feel like you want to give more because it's definitely, this will bless your life. Yes. It is worth a lot more than that. That's right. <laughs> and um, also, let me say that we have Living Faith Crusades throughout yes. the year, uh, but uh, we just encourage you to go to rhema.org slash l LFC to view our itinerary because it's kind of changing sometimes during this time. But we would love to see you at one of our crusades. And you can always go to rhema.org. We have a study center there. You can listen yes. to messages. Um, you can watch videos on demand. Um, really go there. There's a lot of great material that will really bless you. That's right. Well, Denise, I guess it's time to get out of here. Yes. And we want to thank all of our partners who helped to sponsor this program. Thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was where? At Jerusalem. And he had said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, shall be witnesses unto me. I'm talking about God's plan, purposes, and pursuits. What was his plan? You'll be witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, unto the uttermost parts of the earth. This month, Plans, Purposes, and Pursuits, six amazing CDs by Kenneth E. Hagan. Also, Forget Not, You've Got Benefits, a powerful book by Kenneth W. Hagan. And the CD, Whatever You Need, God's Got It. You know, when we pray, we believe that we receive and whatever we ask, you will do it unto us. All seven CDs and the book can be yours today for a gift of $27 or more. So call toll free right now, 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night to order at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.